Hello, my friends. I just want to let you know that I'm going to do my best to hold myself together. I have had a lot of cries this week. Um, I've, I'm very lucky to be surrounded by people that will let me talk about these things and cry. So I've gotten a lot of that pent up sadness out. Um, so I'm going to do my best to keep this a celebration of life um, and not as sad and kind of share uh, the Mel Thompson that I got to know since March uh, was when we started uh, really being friends. Uh, so I I want to, I want to, I watched Kelsey Brianna J's video and it was, that was Mel's best friend. And um, it was very inspirational in that she shared a side of Mel that she knew. And I am just forever grateful for that because there, of course, are so many things that Kelsey knows about Mel that I didn't get a chance to know. And it just, I just felt like a gift that Kelsey had given me. And I wanted to be able to do, see, I'm already getting emotional. I'm not going to, I'm not going to. I'm going to try really hard to hold it together because that's what Mel would do. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so I, I thought that it would be nice if I could share some of the things that I learned about her as a person through our short friendship. Um, before we do, I just want to uh, quickly say hello to the people that are here live. And I do want to ask that if you aren't sure who Mel Thompson is, uh, that you don't, um, you know, ask those questions here, uh, just because it's, it just gets, I don't know, it just, if you can just look up her YouTube channel, uh, that would be great. You can watch Kelsey's video. That would be great. Uh, you know, but if you aren't familiar with her, if you could just be respectful, uh, there are a lot of us that are mourning right now and just, I don't know who she is and all of that is just not, not, it's not terrible, but it's just a little insensitive. Um, so there's plenty of ways that you can find out who, who Mel was, if you could do that. That would be great. And then come back uh, and and spend some time with us in celebration of her life. So uh, let's go ahead and just say hello very quickly to the people that are here live. Uh, let's see. Elizabeth, good morning to you. Alicia, good morning. Yasu Cherry and Sarah. Uh, Monica says, oh, you know what? Let me click. I like clicking on your names. Good morning. Good morning. Monica says, hey, Jen, so sorry for Mel's passing. I know you really were friends, not just YouTubers together. Love and hugs. Thank you so much. Tish, good morning to you. Jeannie, good morning. Uh, Disturbed Chick, good afternoon to you. Uh, Kimberly, good morning to you. Happy Sunday. Uh, good morning, Jen and Latina. Good morning to you and Julio and the rest of the family. Uh, Lana, hello to you. Uh, I'm going to try really hard, Lana, to keep this not as emotional. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to, to, to be as celebratory of life as possible. Uh, and Diana, good morning. I'm so sorry for your loss, Gem. My condolences to Mel's family. I wasn't a follower of Mel's, but she seems to have touched a lot of people. May she rest in peace. Yeah, she she really did touch a lot of people. She's she's a very, she was a very special person. I'm still having trouble speaking about her in the past tense, so I might talk about her in the present tense just because it feels more comfortable for me. So um, yeah, she's she's just such a lovely person. So let me just kind of give you like a history of of how Mel and I connected in that, you know, of course we connected through YouTube. Uh, she came out with Tiny Marvels, which of course I have on my eyes today. And uh, Sydney Grace was kind enough to send that over. I'm not sure if it was Mel or Sydney Grace or a combo or whatever. Um, they were kind enough to send that over. And then when I did my collab with Ofra, I sent it to Mel and Mel did a review on it. And, um, you know, we just kind of had a general appreciation for each other and what each other did. You know, we both were makeup review channels, but it's kind of like you couldn't really get two more opposite makeup up review channels <laughs> than Mel's and mine in that, you know, we, she was so good at the tutorial part and I did more of the sciencey geeky, you know, all of the details, um, for like, you know, the logic behind purchasing where she did more of the heart behind purchasing, you know, the, the quality and how it applied and really showing you how to apply it. Uh, so I think we just had a general appreciation for, you know, how, how we did, content on YouTube. So we were connected uh, just very 
loosely through all of that. And then um, we kind of connected through Instagram DM a little bit. And and at one point, I forget whether she was going through something or I was going through some, we've been going through a lot. <laughs> Mel and I, um, so I forget who was going through what, but um, one of us said to the other, hey, let's connect further. And we both knew we were on that app, Marco Polo, uh, where it's kind of like, it's like a FaceTime app, basically. And you just respond whenever you have time. Uh, and we connected through there in March of 2021. So really not that long ago. Uh, and we would check up on each other like once a week. Uh, sometimes it would be once every two weeks. It just kind of depended what was going on in our lives. Sometimes it would just take a little longer to get back. But, you know, it was never like a big deal. You know, like it was just whenever you could get back, cool. You know, if it takes a week, two weeks, it's, it doesn't matter. Uh, just Mel is such a very easygoing person, just very low stress. And if it took her a while to get back, she'd always apologize. And it's like, Mel, it's okay. Like, I know you have stuff going on. Um, and Mel's been through, went through a lot this past year, you know, with the passing of her grandfather, who she was very, very close to, you know, the loss of her dog, um, you know, all the family stuff and everything. And plus, you know, of course, her health, um, you know, she just had a lot going on behind the scenes. Um, but one thing that Kelsey said that really resonated with me was that it never stopped her from doing her job. You know, she took her job on YouTube so seriously and she put up so much content and it was like, like, I don't, I honestly don't know how she did it. I don't know how, like, that would not have been me. Like, I feel like I have a really good work ethic, but if I'm sick or if I'm sad, I have a lot of trouble filming. Like I was, I had to film on Tuesday for, um, for the Mad Marshmallows, uh, release video. And then I filmed another video that didn't end up going up because I just, I couldn't, I couldn't with everything going on, um, get it edited. So I, I was crying before I filmed that video because, I just couldn't hold it together. I, I was at the first intro I filmed for the Mad Marshmallows video. I was just so sad. And I was like, I need to put on my damn game face because that's what Mel would do. Mel would put on our game face, you know, like I need to just, you know, suck it up and just be there for my job. This is my job. And that's the way Mel would have done it. So that's what I did. And I don't know if you can tell if you watch that video, the beginning of it, my nose is so red because I just been like. I just lost it right before, well, in the middle because I filmed one intro and then I was like, this is just, it's just not, it's not the vibe I want for my brand launch. And, and I just kind of lost it. Um, but I know that Mel wouldn't have wanted me to hold back. Mel wouldn't want me to, to not launch the brand on account of her. Like she would have been really mad at me. <laughs> If I, had, if I had not launched it. So, um, so that's why I did it. And kind of like Kelsey was saying, like, you know, this is the video that I don't want to make, but I know Mel would be really mad at me. <laughs> I know Mel would make it for me. And that I think Mel would have been mad at me if I hadn't filmed that video on account of her. So I'm trying really hard here. Um, cause I don't want this to be a sad video. I want this to be a happy video because there's so much to celebrate when it comes to her. So uh, let me go ahead and go over to the chat and see what y'all are saying and try to get myself together a little bit. So stop leaking, Jen. Stop leaking. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Sally says, I've been praying for a family and friends. Find a bit of peace at this difficult moment. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Alicia, such, such an angel, a, a beautiful soul. Yeah, definitely. Dark Angel, my condolences to all who knew her. I didn't know her. Thoughts and prayers for her friends and family. Uh, Jennifer, I felt honored to have her respond to my comments. I clicked with her uh, due to her deep passion for makeup and chronic illness. She's not in pain anymore. Very true. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to answer this really quickly, Cecilia. A lot of people are asking what specifically happened. I'm, I don't feel like that's my place, uh, to say, I'll just say what's been said publicly, which is that she was very sick for a long time. Um, but I don't think it's my place to say anything specific. Um, just know that she was very sick for a long time and, uh, she just got sick and unfortunately she, her body gave out on her. So um, and nobody expected it. Nobody expected it. I mean, it was the last message I got from her was uh, about eight days before she passed. And she looked amazing. 
she looked incredible. I mean, she's been through so much this year and so often she would send me these messages and I could just tell she was down or, you know, she'd tell me about something she was upset about or whatever, you know, like she would, she would kind of vent about things that were happening and she, there were just, there was just so much, there were so many layers of so many things. It wasn't just the health thing. I mean, you know, that's hard enough, but then, you know, with her grandfather and with the with her dog passing that she, you know, loved and, you know, different other things happening um, that may or may not be public. I'm not sure. So I'm not going to talk about it, but I mean, she just had so many layers of so many things happening. And the last message she sent me was the best I had seen her look in months. I mean, like probably since, since early June, uh, maybe even the first polos I got from her and, in, in no, it was probably May was the last time I saw her look that happy. Um, and she looked perfect absolutely perfect um you know i knew that that her body was not doing well and that she'd been in and out of the hospital um but you don't expect you always you expect people you know it's 35 you don't expect a 35 year old's body to give out you know like i don't think any of us expected that to actually happen you know you always expect that she'll just you know it's just a chronic illness thing you know she's going to have, it'll just be something that she deals with, you know, and, 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 you know, we'll keep talking about it and we'll talk through it and everything. You don't expect someone to pass away. Uh, that, that was really, um, a shock, I think for everybody, you know, it was a shock for everybody. Hi, Lupe. Lupe says, you mentioned her with so much admiration and love many times. I'm so sorry, Jen. I lost my best friend last year and it's been so hard. I'm so sorry to hear that. My heart goes out to you and all the people she touched. And I think that loss is one of those things that we can all relate to. I think we've all lost somebody. Um, and as far as Mel goes, you know, we weren't best friends. You know, I, I said to people, I feel like I was on Mel's B team. You know how, like when you have friends, you've got your A team, you know, your people that you're so close to that you just tell everything to, you know, all of the little things, not just the big things, but the little things, uh, that's your A team. And then you have your B team, which you still consider friends, but you don't necessarily tell them all the nitty gritty. You don't necessarily talk to them every single day. And I felt like Mel and I were on each other's B teams, you know, still good friends, um, but not the closest of the close. Um, but I, I know we all know the feeling of loss. We all know, you know, how it can leave that hole in your heart. And I think that in that we can all, you know, be unified in knowing and understanding that feeling. And there aren't, I feel like there's so many things in this world that you just can't understand until you've been through it. But I think loss like this is something that we've all been through. So we can all relate to each other, whether you were a follower of Mel, whether you even knew who she was, whether, you know, whether you were her best friend, I, we, we all know what loss feels like. Uh, so we can all kind of bond through that. And we don't, and, and the other thing I wanted to mention is we don't necessarily have to talk about this the entire chat because it is an hour chat. Uh, but I did want to make sure that I made this the main topic because I really try to make chat be about what is heavy on my heart, like what I'm thinking about, what is what's happening in the beauty community, what's what's something that I'm really thinking about. And I I I think about Mel first thing I wake up in the morning, last thing I think about before I go to bed. Every day. Every day. And throughout the day, just pops into my head all day. Um, so there's no way I could do chat without talking about Mel. There's just no way. There's just no way. And I think it's because she was such a light, you know. I've been listening to the Hamilton soundtrack quite a bit. And uh, one of the lines in one of the songs is, uh, death doesn't discriminate between the sinners and the saints, it just takes and it takes, you know? And I don't think that any of us are saints, you know? Nobody is. Nobody's a saint, but Mel was pretty damn close. <laughs> Mel was pretty, pretty damn close. She was just a genuinely good people person. You know, like when you meet somebody and they almost have a halo over their head, you know? They just, it's like, damn, that is a really nice person, you know? Where you know they just wouldn't hurt anybody on purpose, you know, everybody hurts somebody at some point, you know, but she would never hurt anybody on purpose. You know, she just was a kind person, you know? So, so yeah, sorry. I really didn't, I was really confident that I was going to be able to hold it together, but I should know myself better. <laughs> yeah. 
Martha says we all need to cry for her. Yeah, we do. I think we do. I think it's important. Um, but at the same time, I do also want to celebrate her. So, yes, uh, <laughs> Mel would have been first in line for Mad Marsh. You know, she, you know, I, she was, I told you I sent marshmallows to influencers and Mel was on that list. So, but I don't want to look like I'm trying to like promote my marshmallows <laughs> through Mel's endorsement. So I'm not going to talk too much about it uh, because it is a little bit awkward in that, you know, I don't want to, you know, do that. But Mel, Mel was one of my taste testers, I will say. Uh, that she she was on the list. She was on the list. So, yeah, Michelle, Mel's death caught me off guard and hit me like hard like many of us. I've lost too many friends early lately. I'm so sorry to hear that, Michelle. It doesn't get easier, you know? It doesn't get easier when we lose somebody. It, it doesn't... It, every person just leaves this hole, you know? And it can't it can't be filled by other people, you know? It just can't be. It can't be. Tracy says, I found Mel a long time ago and related to her with all the health, autoimmune, chronic pain issues. I found her so inspiring and strong. She was always positive. She was. She really was. And and another thing I said, you know, I have this What's Been Makeup Facebook group uh, that I have for people talking about, um, you know, the makeup releases and, and it helps me with the show so people can submit things and, um, I can make sure I don't miss anything. You know, it's kind of my, my scan to make sure that I, I haven't missed anything for the week. And I, uh, um, you know, uh, Diana, who's been a part of the what's of makeup team forever. Um, Diana, she, uh, she posted it in the group and we have a no chatter rule over there because, uh, when, when people post things, if people comment underneath it, it bumps it to the top. So if people don't comment under it, it keeps everything in order. So I know what's new and I'm not looking at things from three weeks ago. Um, and it just, it, it streamlines my process so much to not have comments, uh, underneath the things. I mean, people can still rate and everything, but I turn, I, I, I ask people, please don't comment on the, on the releases. Um, just because it, it makes my process so much easier. And when Diana posted, I turned Diana specifically turned the comments off because I think she knew it was going to generate a lot of of talk. And I I <laughs> I went against protocol and I, I turned the comments on because I do feel like community is so important when there's a, a a group loss. I feel like you know talking about memories and talking about you know things like Tracy's talking about. I think a lot of people can relate to what Tracy's saying. In that, that, you know, that maybe you related because of the health, autoimmune, chronic pain issues. Maybe you found her inspiring. Maybe you learned things from her. Um, you know, and I think that having that community in this kind of time is really important um, to be there for each other. So, uh, so yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Uh, Falcon, her spirit was very bright and shown brightly in the YouTube universe. Such a sad time for all who knew her. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's so many comments. I'm going to go ahead and scroll all the way down. Thank you all so much for all of your comments. And I wish I could read all of them because each one of you and your feelings are so important. Um, but I probably just skipped through about 40 comments because there's no way I'm going to be able to read everything. So, um, Blondie says, I told Mel how much joy she brought to my adult autistic daughter who would squeal and clap when Mel would say, hey, beauties. Mel answered right back and said that made her day. She was so selfless. And I genuinely believe she meant that from her soul. Um, helping people was part of who she was. She loved helping people. She loved being able to read comments and know that she was doing good in the world. So if you ever left her a comment, she read it. She read it. Even if she wasn't able to respond to every single comment, she read your comment and she appreciated it. She appreciated people liking what she was creating. She really did. Um, Tiny Marvels meant so much to her. Uh, it really did. It meant so much to her. And the, the, the positive response people had to Tiny Marvels was a huge deal. Um, I'm going to show it to you in case you've never seen it. It's really incredible. Uh, she did such a wonderful job with this palette and she really loved insects. That was a big part of who she was. And we got cicadas here. Mel did not get cicadas this year. We got cicadas in Maryland and uh, I took some videos of the cicadas for her so that she could see them. <laughs> Uh, she really liked the cicadas. <laughs> she just loved bugs in general. I know Kelsey was talking about how she knew all the spider breeds. Like, oh, what kind of spiders? This is poisonous. 
and they'll be like, oh, this is a blah, blah, blah spider. <laughs> she loved, she loved tiny, tiny creatures and tiny marvels. So she, um, she, this was the palette that she created. And uh, my favorite shade in here that I've said many times is fire butts, which is what I have all over my lid today. I might as well talk about it. I, we're not at the halfway point, but uh, she did such a fantastic job with this palette. Um, I used Jewel B, which was one of her favorite shades. I used Jewel B and Spider um, and yeah, and Fire Butts. Did I use anything else today? I don't know. Um, but they're just, it's just such a fun, fun palette and such a, let me just swatch Fire Butts for you just so you can get like, are you kidding? Like what, 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 what? Like, I mean, it doesn't get more beautiful than that. Like, it's so easy to work with, so easy to use. And I know Sydney Grace, uh, the company, the people over that company loved her so much. Uh, yeah, she, she just knocked it out of the park with this. Absolutely knocked it out of the park. So... Yeah. Hi, Angie. Angie says, I can't explain what she meant to me personally. She just touched me in a way I can't explain. It was real. Um, and my heart is broken. Yeah. And, and, and when, um, Diana actually texted me, I was, I was in Michael's, uh, with my husband and we were shopping for props for my marshmallows for, to take photos of the marshmallows to put up on the website. Uh, and, we were just walking down the aisle and I saw Diana had texted me and I hadn't talked to Diana. What Diana, how long I've been since I talked to you? Like six months. It's been a while. Um, since I talked to Diana and, uh, I was like, why is Diana texting me? What's going on? Is she okay? Like, is everything all right? And she, she, you know, texted me that, that Mel had passed. And I was like, no, I was like, that has to be a, that can't be real. Like, that's not real. You know, so of course I, you know, I stopped in the aisle and I looked on my phone and I looked on Instagram and I saw that her husband, Eric, um, that Mel always called him Puffin. She never called him Eric. Um, so I'm going to call him Puffin because Mel, Mel called him Puffin. Um, the Puffin had posted about, uh, you know, that she had passed away and I just broke down in the middle of Michael's. I like in the middle of the store, I'm like a complete mess. Like, I was, I just lost it. I was like this, and it just still didn't sink in. It still didn't sink in. It was like, there's, there's no way like this, this can't like something like this. I had to, I was trying to figure out a way to like, just like, there's gotta be a mistake here. Like, how could this be a mistake? You know, I'm queen of devil's advocate, right? I'm always trying to see the other side of things. I'm always trying to see the other perspective. Um, you know, even when, when I shouldn't be trying to see other, I'm always trying to see the other perspective. It's like there has to be some other explanation for this. There, there's no way this could be a real, real thing, you know. And it took it. It's still. I'm still having trouble wrapping my brain around it. Um, one thing I wanted to share that I was reminded. I was going through Mel's old polos just as a fun fact about Mel is how much she loved sweet tea. <laughs> I wanted to mention that just as a fun fact or something that she shared with me about her love of sweet tea. And she told me the story of the first time she ever had sweet tea. And she just, she said she had it over a friend's house and she just guzzled it. That it was like the best thing she had ever had in her life was sweet tea. <laughs> so I don't know if that bring, I don't know if she'd ever shared that publicly, uh, but I did want to share, you know, just, I was, I was trying to think of something that she shared that is appropriate for me to share because I don't want to um, share things she didn't share publicly, but I don't think she'd be upset for me sh telling you that story that she told me about her, uh, her initial introduction to sweet tea and, and how amazing it was. <laughs> but yeah, Ellen says, I accidentally found her channel and it was love from Hey Beauties, her soul, her heart came through in every video, seeing Puffins post it in my heart me deep in my heart thinking of him and her kids. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, you know, she's, she was such, such a cool person, you know, such a, a kind, kind, genuinely kind and caring person, you know? Yeah. And one thing that I, um, one thing that that uh, I like that Kelsey said in her videos was a way that you can support Mel because um, there is a GoFundMe that I linked. I don't think I linked it down below yet. I did link Kelsey's video where the GoFundMe link is there. The GoFundMe link is under What's Up and Makeup today that Kelsey set up for Mel's family. Um, there's a GoFundMe link in, on Kelsey's video. It's on today's What's Up and Makeup. Um, but if you want to support Mel and you don't, you know, feel comfortable or don't have the means or don't 
you know, want to support the GoFundMe, a great way you can support Mel is by watching her videos still, um, by continuing to go back. You know, if you, like Kelsey gave a great suggestion, if you um, think about something you want to do, like you want to learn how to, you know, do a smoky eye or a cut crease or something, or, you know, go back in her history of her videos. She made a video on so many makeup techniques, you know, go back and, you know, if you have a palette that, that you pulled out and you're like, man, I want to do a new look with this, search and see if Mel reviewed it. Search and see if Mel has a, a video on it and watch the video. Um, you know, that is super helpful, you know, and, and before you leave, make sure you hit a like on the video. Uh, you know, I, I, that's, that will really help Mel's family uh, to, to continue to watch her videos uh, because, you know, the channel is still monetized and it's a free way to support, um, just to help support her family. So... Yeah, Christy says, I love my Tiny Marvels palette. It's been an absolute in my collection. I have never rotated it out since I got my hands on it. I hope Sydney Grace re-releases it in honor of Mel. I hope so, too. I actually, I brought this. I have a video that I put up not too long ago when I came back from Rehoboth Beach on my vacation, and I brought Tiny Marvels with me. And I was talking about in that video how I'd set Mel Marco Polo of my look and told her I brought Tiny Marvels. And when she got back to me, she was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you brought it. You know, I'm I'm so, you know, honored that of all the palettes you own, you brought Tiny Marvels. Uh, it's just it was it's that good of a palette. It's not it wasn't just it was partially because I was trying to bring my friends with me because I brought my Raw Beauty Christie palette, too. But really and truly, it was it was about bringing the palettes that that. I really thought would do the best for me while I was on vacation and also be, you know, be fun to use. I'm on vacation. I want to use fun palettes, you know, and, and it really is. It's a fun palette. Uh, Gigi, this is a great question. Um, would you consider sharing some of her Marco Polos? Mel had her Marco Polo account too, that you can't download them. Um, so I feel like she, I don't know if she would want me to do that. Uh, so because she had her account set that you can't download them specifically, um, what I might do is maybe share like some of the visuals, but not the audio, just because I don't, I don't want to share something that Mel wouldn't have wanted me to share. And there's no way for me to know. Um, if I felt confident that she'd be okay with it, then I would share them, but I don't feel confident in that. Um, because I, I, it's a, I, I feel like I want, I want to share as much of her that I have of her as possible. And I'm so lucky that I have recorded every conversation we've ever had. I have recorded and I can go back and watch. Um, and yeah, if I felt confident that she'd be okay with it, I would. Um, maybe I can find like some clips like the sweet tea story or something. <laughs> That um, that I feel like she would be okay. But the thing is, is I don't know if she felt comfortable in the way that she looked, you know, like, you know, sometimes you talk to friends, you don't necessarily feel like you look the way you would if you were talking to, you know, if, you, if she was filming, like, she would often get ready to film while she'd like be get, putting her makeup on getting ready to film while she was talking, you know, multitasking, because, you know, she had to, she had very busy, busy life. Um, but I don't know if she would want, like, she would feel comfortable even that. You know, I don't know. I don't know. So, oh, uh, Gigi, this is your other comment. This is a great one. Sweet tea marshmallows. Actually, Mel's favorite. Okay, let me tell you Mel's favorite marshmallow. This is pretty a funny story. So, and please don't take this like this. I'm, I almost didn't want to tell the story because I don't want people to think that I'm using this as like a way to sell more. I, I'm not, I promise. Um, you know, but I think it's a funny story. So that's why I want to tell it is that um, I sent Mel and her family box of marshmallows and Mel's favorite was mint chocolate chip. Puffin does not like mint chocolate chip. Mel really loves mint chocolate chip. So I was making the batch for her and I accidentally misread the recipe that I had written down and I put in double the amount of mint than I was supposed to. And after I made them, I tasted them. I was like, these are really freaking minty. Like these are like out of control. <laughs> How minty they are. And I had the kids taste them and they're like, whoa, these are like out of freaking control. So I didn't end up giving them to anybody um, because I just thought they were just too minty. But I told little John, I was like, let's wrap up an extra minty for Mel. We're going to wrap up some regular ones and we'll wrap up an extra minty for Mel. And uh, I sent them to her and she, th those were her favorites, <laughs> were the mistake ones. <laughs> those were her favorites, were the ones that weren't even like the way they were supposed to be. <laughs> it was like a mistake, um, you know? So I just thought that that was really funny that she liked the ones that were like wrong. 
<laughs> so, um, you know, yeah, that was, that, that's, you know, a thing, but sweet tea marshmallows, that is, that's actually a really good idea. That's a really good idea. I'd have to figure out what I would roll them in. Cause they have to be rolled in something cause they get really sticky on the outside. So you have to roll them in something, but yeah, I totally, it's totally a genius idea. Maybe I could just roll them in the marshmallow flour. Yeah, Marielle, I, I was trying to go to bed when I found out I couldn't sleep all night. It just doesn't feel real. I loved her perspective on things. I believe the world has lost one of its most beautiful souls. Oh, I totally agree. I totally agree. I think a lot of us are just feeling very similarly, very similar. Yes, Gigi, you know, I saw this third Gigi comment. You know how much I love nice Gigi. Um, <laughs> Gigi, that's that's a story of me and Gigi, the nice Gigi. Um, so Refer Brush has donated $10,000 to um to mel's gofundme which was incredibly generous incredibly generous i saw that on there yeah julie says i can't watch her videos yet so sad yeah and and i feel like watching her videos and watching her marco polos i feel like it's helping me to cry through it it's helping me to get closure it's helping me to um to be able to it's not helping me to wrap my brain around it. I'll tell you that. It's definitely not helping me to, when, and when I laugh, it's it's a nervous laughter. It's a, a me trying not to break down laughter. I want to make sure that's interpreted appropriately. Um, you know, it, it's, but it's helping me to, to find peace. You know, I don't know. I guess everybody deals with loss differently. So for me, it's helping me, but I know for some people watching her videos is not going to be helpful yet. Yes, I think we should all drink sweet tea and watch her videos, definitely. She did love Wayne so much. She really did. She loved Wayne. She adored him. She absolutely adored him. Oh, thank you, Angie, for watching her videos. Kieran, morning and thanks for this, Jen. I want to watch all of her videos. Yes. Yes. And thank you all for being here. Oh, Paul says, she's one of the people who made me get into makeup and feel okay to have fun with it. She made it feel like we were friends and just sitting down together for makeup. Best wishes to her family. Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I, she had a way of making you feel like you were special, you know, through the screen. She really did. She really did. Pam says, Jen, I love that you have so many amazing memories with Mel. It's so beautiful that you're celebrating her life here. Thank you. Although I was just a subscriber, I felt connected to her. Yeah, I, I wish I had been able to be close to her longer. I do. Um, because our friendship was really short. It's like six months. You know, like it's it just doesn't feel long enough. Sorry. I don't know that's selfish, but it doesn't feel long enough. I never know what's gonna when it's gonna hit me. Whew. Let's have some coffee. <laughs> I wore my uh, my labyrinth shirt today. It says, "Should you need us?" Because uh, I kind of feel like that about people who pass away that they're kind of always with us. You know, I don't know if you you know the story of of labyrinth, uh, but but yeah, it kind of. You know, it takes on a new meeting when you think about it in that context at the end when when all of the the you know her friends that she meets in the labyrinth come and say, you know, if you need us, we'll be here for you, kind of thing. I kind of feel like that way, you know, about people who pass, that they're they're always kind of there with you. You know, no matter what you believe spiritually, you know, I feel like even if they're just in your memories, they're still always going to be there. Even if it's just in your memories, I believe more than that. Um, but, but even if you don't believe in that, they're still there in your memories, you know? So, yeah. Um, Wendy says, will she receive the money from the ads? Her family will. Yes, her family will receive the money from the ads. Yes. Oh, wow. Kara says, even though he's in so much grief, Puffin still personally respond to my donation with a lovely note, lifting up all who love and care about Mel. Yes. 
Uh, Noah, I learned techniques from her. Yes. It's, it's such a good teacher. Such a good teacher. Oh, Mrs. Unnecessary. See, this is, this is so special. I mean, think about, you know, there are so many influencers and I'm guilty of this too, of not responding to all of my DMs. Mel DM with me and we shared our struggles with health. I had the hardest time logging into YouTube knowing I would never have another new Hey Beauties. I mean, she really did respond to a lot of people. Absolutely. All right. Um, Julie, you know what? I, I'm not sure exactly what Kelsey was talking about. Julie says, how active does her account need to be for it to stay active? I think as long as Puffin keeps it open, it'll be active. Um, but I think that if more people are watching the videos, they're more likely to show up in people's recommendeds. So maybe that's what Kelsey meant by that. Um, but like I have a channel that I haven't posted on since 2011, I want to say. And I could still post over there if I wanted to, if I remembered the password. So, um, you know, I don't know why I'm getting notifications. Um, uh, Jelly says, there's a tweet that I saved. It describes grief as a ball in a box. It really helped me understand that it's okay when it, that hit comes out of nowhere. I can post in the comments. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. You know, and, and Puffin will still be able to read the comments because um, he has access to her account. So if he ever wants to go in and read nice messages, he'll be able to do that. There's some really strange people in chat today. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting rid of them. Okay, good. They're they're still showing. I forgot that they they still show up. No, um, okay, thank you, moderators, for getting the really strange people showing up. Um, I think that that when when someone passes away, sometimes it makes really mean people come out of the woodwork. Um, you know, which is really awful and sad. Um, that that people would take that time to just be mean. Angela says, Jen, I just personally want to say that I would all, we, that we would all feel the same about you. You all deserve to always know that. Well, thank you so much, Angela. I appreciate that. Thank you. I think that, um, you know, it's, it's hard because when we're, when we're, you know, on YouTube and we're talking to a camera and you're watching from your homes you know, there's only so much that we can communicate, but it really does feel like a real connection, you know, and I know Mel really connected with a lot of people uh, and really touched a lot of people. Yeah, she would, um, she would pull on me on her walk. She'd take walks around her neighborhood and she'd always have, I have a, I put a shot of it in the thumbnail um, of her with her big old headphones on. <laughs> walking through the neighborhood, uh, taking a walk because she was always doing something else whenever she would send me a Marco Polo because she's multitasker. You know, she had a lot of things to do. <laughs> so, I mean, just the fact that she was DMing people back, it's like, I don't know how she had time to do all of the things she might like, she, she was always so busy and she never like, I don't know. I just, she was always doing something else, always multitasking. But Tamara says, it's amazing the grief I've felt, the way this community of creators and subscribers alike have come together in grief is a tribute to what beautiful soul, what a beautiful soul Mel has. Yeah, I think so too. Um, and there's a lot of people that aren't speaking out yet. And I think, um, I think it's really important to let people um, that don't want to talk about it or don't feel comfortable talking about it, let them be. Uh, because I feel like for some people, it's just, they just can't. Um, I'm thinking about somebody right now that I doubt that they're going to put, it was a good friend of Mel's. I doubt that they're going to end up putting anything up because I feel like it's just too hard. So, um, and that's okay too. I think that's okay too. I think that, that we all grieve in our own ways and, 
you know, just because someone's not talking about it doesn't mean that they don't care or that they, you know, um, don't have stories to tell. It's just everyone has to handle this in their own way. Harvey says, it was I was binge watching her videos last week and I found the next day she passed and I was shocked and sad and I haven't been able to watch her last few yet. My prayers go out to Puffin and the kids. Yeah, absolutely. And she loved those kids. She loved her dog so much, like her little dog. Oh my gosh, she took that dog everywhere. Like um, it was like a, an emotional support dog, the little one. And, um, you know, she took that dog everywhere to the grocery store, you know, <laughs> everywhere. Um, when she wasn't feeling well, dog was... All by her side all the time. Um, very much a dog person. The ukulele fool, a teacher in the ukulele world passed several years ago. His family has kept his channel active and the videos still show up and recommended on YouTube. That's great to know. That's great to know. And I, you know, publicly want to thank the people at my ukulele practice on Tuesday because I was a freaking mess. <laughs> I was a mess ukulele practice. Um, we did let it be and I lost it. I just had tears just streaming down my face while we were playing Let It Be. I don't know why, it just hit me when we were playing that song. Um, you know, I don't know if Mel, you know, was watching over during that song, but I just, during that song, I just got overwhelmed. You know, I kept playing, but I was, you know, I was overwhelmed that day. So my friends at Ukulele that don't do YouTube, were um were really there for me that day because I found out on Monday she passed on Sunday I found out on Monday and then Tuesday is my ukulele practice so um but thank you for that insight because I just totally took that to my own personal story instead of acknowledging what you were saying um yeah I don't I think that the channel will stay active it's just a matter of keeping it kind of in recommended so uh Andrea says, I watched Kelsey's video yesterday and utterly lost it. My best friend died suddenly on October in October of 2019, and I could very much relate to her grief. Yeah, and I think that that's where we can all kind of unite in that we've all lost somebody. You know, we've all lost, um, you know, somebody that's close to us, and we can we can relate to that. Happy G says, sorry, you all have the extra pressure to moderate in this time of grief. You're doing amazing mods. They really are. I am so lucky. I feel like I have the best mods on the planet and they've been with me forever. Like my, my mod team's been with me forever. Some people have come and gone, but um, the people that are here have been with me a really long time. Yeah, probably. Janelle, probably that, um, that, um, Kelsey was meaning to keep the channel generating money. Absolutely. I think, I do think that that's probably what she meant. Uh, Clarissa says Mel's collab with Christian Audette is still available and her lipsticks are beautiful. The packaging has her picture. And I would imagine, um, all of her affiliate links will probably still work. So if you know that Mel had an affiliate link for something, or if you know, she had a collab that's still available, that I'm sure that, that her family will still continue to earn off of that as well. Kara says, Jen, thank you for doing this live and giving us a place to celebrate Mel's beautiful soul. You're very welcome. And I think that, you know, like I was saying a little bit earlier, I feel like, you know, having a live conversation with people that cared about her, I think is important, you know, that we can all be together during this time. I think um, it helps to have other people, even though, you know, we may be in different countries, you know, maybe thousands of miles away, um, you know, we can all unite in this through the screen right now and, and just be together and feel what we need to feel. So Amelia, I'm very sorry for your, the, for your lost friend, Jen. Mel was such a positive light. She made me happy with every video and her laugh would make me laugh. Yes. She had a very unique laugh, didn't she? And people ask, is Mel's laugh real? Yes, 100%. Mel's laugh was 100% real. It was the same laugh that she laughed off camera. <laughs> she, it's the same laugh. Mel's laugh was unique and contagious and fabulous. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever know someone that will laugh the way Mel laughed. Um, and if you watched her, you know exactly what I'm talking about. 
we're so lucky to have the pleasure of knowing her. And that was one thing I learned from Kelsey's video was I didn't realize that Kelsey was the one that got Mel to do YouTube. So I am just forever grateful to Kelsey for bringing Mel to YouTube because I never would have met Mel. We never would have gotten a chance to know Mel if it weren't for Kelsey. So um, I do have her video link below if you feel um, like you'd like to. I felt, I mean, she she's obviously very emotional multiple times in the video for very good reason. Um, but if you want to watch that video, I felt like I got some, some insights into Mel that I wasn't able to learn in our short friendship. And I'm just forever grateful to Kelsey for that video because I, I got to know a side of Mel. I got to learn about what it was like to work with Mel behind the Mac counter, you know, like that's something I never would have been able to know without Kelsey. So I'm, I'm just so incredibly grateful. McKay Carradine says, that's just it. There's this connection we get as viewers, feeling a bond. It left me heartbroken, was taken by surprise by that. At that, yeah, absolutely. And I think that we should all, um, whether you knew her or not, doesn't, like, I feel like some people may say, well, you didn't really know her. But I feel like when you have a connection with someone through YouTube, I know they call it parasocial relationships. And that sounds like such a negative thing. But when you, when you get to, you, Mel really opened up. You know, she really showed herself. She shared things that were personal and things that were real, things that were really real about who she was. And I feel like in that way, you know, we all got to bond with her, whether you had ever had a personal conversation with her or not, because she was kind enough to share so much of her heart. And I think that's why a lot of people really connected with her um, was because she was so open about the things going on in her life, whether, I mean, I think she really put on that strong face and didn't, you know, I never felt like she was complaining. You know what I mean? Even though she had absolute right to feel sad and, and kind of complain. I mean, she had so many things going on that were hard, you know, even just to say, this is really hard. You know, I'm having a hard time. You know, she just, she just kept going, you know? And it's okay to feel, even though you didn't, what my point was, even if you never had a personal conversation with her, it's okay to have a feeling that this is a personal loss. Ms. Travel Chica says, one of the most motive, moving and authentic, relatable, but heartfelt videos I've seen on YouTube was the one that came out more recently about her illness and chronic health challenges, as well as related mental struggles. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, Sally says, I wish I could have known Mel and Kelsey when they worked at Mac. Me too. That must have been such a special, fun time to shop with them. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure it would have been. Jennifer says, I loved Mel's video so much. She taught me so much. She was such a beautiful person. I agree. This is unnecessary. Genuine is the word I would use for Mel. I agree. I agree. And it's really, you know, it's really hard to be genuine on YouTube. Um, I definitely see people not being genuine because when you open up and be genuine, then when someone criticizes you, they're criticizing the real you instead of a persona that you've created for the internet. And I know some influencers uh, have done a really good job creating a persona of them for the internet that isn't really who they are. And I understand that. You know, I understand that um, you have to protect yourself. You have to protect your mental health. So I don't blame people for doing that. Um, but Mel really, truly allowed people into her heart. She really, truly allowed people to see her. And that's a big risk. You know, that's a big emotional mental health risk to truly tell the truth about who you are because you open yourself up to criticism about who you really are. And it's it's hard it's really freaking hard. So, um, it takes some, some bravery, you know, to, to be as open as Mel was. Yeah. Lisa, Tara Lynn and Jennifer, I'm not sure how to pronounce Jenna's last name froze. I'm not sure. I, I apologize if I pronounce that incorrectly. Um, have beautiful videos too. I haven't had a chance to watch those, but I do know that Tara and Jenna were, um, good friends of Mel's. Uh, 
Emily says, my heart is broken, but I have her channel uh, playing on repeat since Sunday every once in a while. It plays your vids and Angelica's too, but it's amazing hearing Mel's laugh and her hey beauties. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And she's she's given us a gift in that we can visit her channel anytime. Like Kelsey was saying in the video, you know, anytime you miss her, you can go see her. You know, it's not new content, but you can go see her. She's she's there and available, you know, to, to go watch her channel. And it's a gift. It really is. I mean, you think about people that, you know, back before cameras and, and all of that, there are people that are lost to history, that we have no record of their stories, no record of their life, no record of even what they looked like. Um, and they're just lost to history. And we're, we're, so, we're living in a time where we're so fortunate to be able to um, have video of people where we can see them again and hear their voice again, you know. Oh, Mama Goonie. This is the first I've heard of her passing. I'm so glad I heard it from you first, Jen. Thank you. Oh, Mama Goonie. Mama Goonie, I'm sending you the biggest, biggest hug. Thank you for being here. Jilly says, even beyond, beyond the parasocial relationship, the grief of people who may not have known her shows that we still live in a world with empathy, and that can be hard to see these days. And that's an excellent point, Jilly. I love that comment. Um, it's true. And I, I think that, you know, we do live in a time where people are so divided and people can be so mean um, and so cruel and so heartless. Uh, it's, it is nice to see I really, I have, I've talked about this before. I feel like it's like an 80, 20 rule <laughs> and maybe that's overly optimistic. I, I, I know that sometimes I'm overly optimistic, but I feel like 80% of people in this world are genuinely good people that just want good things. You know, they want good things for their family. They want good things for others. Uh, I do. I truly believe that. And this is a time where that 80% can shine, where that 80% can, um, can really, um, you know, be at the forefront. And I haven't seen a lot of negative. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to get some negative on this video that I'll have to block, delete and all of that. Uh, and I know there's some, some, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. I know that there's some, um, some negative out there, but I, I feel like that it's so much more positive you know, and I think that part of that is because Mel was such a good person, you know, it's, it's, she's, she's such a light. Hi there says, uh, when you have chronic illness and pain, you fight to not let it be visible because it feels like you're giving in. So you put on your armor so you can try to function as though you don't have pain and illness. Thank you for that insight because I think that insight is really important. And I have a feeling that Mel would have agreed with that. Um, I don't know that for a fact, um, but I, I have a feeling that Mel would have agreed with that based on the conversations we had about her being in and out of the hospital and um, going to the doctors and the visits and 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 all of that. Uh, Summer says, I met a woman through YouTube. We share a deep bond, but I don't even know her full real name. We've shared similar backgrounds and struggles. These are real bonds. Please let me validate the pain felt. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. Yeah, Thriving and Beyond, when Mel talked about some of the mean comments she would receive when she was struggling was heartbreaking. People can be so cruel. They really can. And I think that, um, you know, there's just some people that just don't have empathy. Like we were talking about a second ago, there are people that um, don't consider that people on the internet are human beings. And we've talked about that before. But, you know, really and truly, I think that Mel focused on the positive. She focused, you know, 99% on those of you that watched her and appreciated her content. I mean, the only time it affected her was when she felt like, um, you know, maybe people were, you know, maybe she had, might have done something wrong. Um, and then, you know, people reassured her and then she felt better about it. Uh, she she just really focused on the positive. And I think you saw that through her content that, that she, she really, was able to block out the mean stuff and was able to focus on those of you that left the nice comments, which I struggle with. Um, she was much better at it than I am at really reading the comments from you who left something nice and taking that into her heart and letting that consume her, the love, letting the love consume her rather than the few 
that um, were trying deliberately to hurt her, um, especially during such a hard time. She was really good at taking in the positive. Emily says she saved me at one of my worst times, as did many YouTubers, but I'm pretty sure either Tara or Stephanie mentioned she was still on her floor in her living room when I started watching her. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I started watching her because she um, was getting mentioned by some of other people that I watched, um, and she was showing up in my recommended, and I just clicked and, you know, really enjoyed her content, you know? Angela says, thank you for the space to remember her life and work. So helpful for grieving and processing, loving on Mel Puffin and her children and Kelsey, Brianna J. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. And I, I do think these kinds of spaces are important. And if you're watching this on the replay, you can always leave um, your thoughts down in the comments and participate down there and comment back to people. You know, if someone says something that resonates with you, comment back to them and tell them, you know, and, and we can really come together as a community in times like this and really support each other. Jennifer says, I loved hearing Mel's reviews. I'm very sad I wasn't able to get her palette because it was sold out. Tiny Marvels is my dream palette. Mel taught me how to blend and so much about brushes. Yes, Shaw me a lot too. I don't think I will ever get as good as Mel, but she did teach me a lot and I will be going back to her tutorials. I will be going back and I will be watching them because I know there's so much that I still haven't um, haven't been able to absorb. So re-watching, I can't say I've watched every single one. So now I need to go back to the library and slowly go through the ones that I haven't watched uh, to make sure I didn't miss anything because I'm sure I did. I'm sure I missed some of those amazing things. She's just so incredibly talented. So talented. Yeah, Mrs. Unnecessary says, seeing all the tributes on Instagram was amazing and heart-wrenching. It's a legacy for her children to see in the future. Oh, totally. Totally. All right, we've got about three minutes left. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, and thank you for... Sorry, it's coming, coming up again. Thank you for being my community that I can talk to. Um, there are a lot of people saying thank you for giving us this space. I want to thank you for giving me this space that I can talk about my friend. Because... Um, you know, she's really freaking special and uh, nobody is ever going to replace her. I mean, we had, a sh like I said, you know, we weren't best friends, um, but we were friends. And, you know, the conversations we had were unique to us. And, uh, you know, I think for a lot of us, there's going to be a hole. So I want to thank you for giving me a place where I can feel like, I have somebody that knows how I feel. So um, thank you for, for being here and giving me giving me somebody to talk to about it. I mean, I'm, I'm very lucky to have other people to talk to too, but it's nice to talk to you about it. So thank you for that. Uh, uh, Lung says, I remember, Lung, Lung Cassandra says, I remembered I started watching Mel because of Wayne, Wayne Goss recommended her in his videos. Yeah. And you got to see in Wayne's videos, her talent at using his palettes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Amanda, I subscribed to her from the first video I ever saw of her. She was that magnetic, talented, and special. And I a hundred percent agree with that. Magnetic, talented, special. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yep. Uh, Rebecca says, of course I didn't know her, but this hits harder than say a celebrity death. I agree. I agree. Always remember that laugh. I think that laugh was full of her sweetness. Oh, totally. Totally. And I do think it hits harder than a celebrity death because I feel like Mel allowed us to know her. She allowed her audience to know her more than the typical celebrity would. And that makes it that much harder. So because we felt that much level, much more of a closeness to her. Miss Travel Chica, uh, Mick Travel Chica, I'm so thankful I found people like her in the beauty community that helped me not only survive hardest days, but actually gave my life quality and enrichment, gave me connection when I felt so lonely, a blessing. I agree. I agree. 
And I think that there are those channels that really help us, um, you know, that we can kind of escape and, uh, and watch someone like Mel. Okay, Jennifer says, I just want all the people on here with chronic illness. It's okay to speak on it. Mel brought awareness to that. It's hard when you have an illness that isn't visible. I think that's really important. And I'm going to end on Jennifer's comment because I think that it's a really important message. Um, and if you've never struggled with chronic illness, which is something that I've never struggled with, um, it's important to listen to voices like Jennifer and, um, you know, and really respect people that don't have an illness that can be seen and know that they could be quietly struggling. And if you know someone that struggles with chronic illness, you know, send them a text message, tell them, you know, ask them, Hey, how you doing today? I'm thinking about you, you know, and, and it'll mean a lot, you know, especially ones that are able to hide it as well as Mel was able to hide it. So um, I want to thank you all again so much for being here. I'm going to go ahead and pop off here. <sighs> Um, I really was trying not to cry. Uh, I, I apologize if this came off more sad than I intended. I didn't know what was going to happen when, when we started. Um, but I feel like, you know, anytime you can celebrate it, I think that Mel would want that. Mel would want us to, um, to feel happy thinking about her as much as possible. Um, she wouldn't want us to be in pain. She would want us to um, think about the happy memories. So, yeah. Um, thank you for being here. It seems like there's no great way to end this. So I will just hope that you have a wonderful week. And as always, mad love to you. And I will see you in a video soon. Bye, everybody.